All right, let's read the paragraph first. The fundamental laws that govern the smallest constituents of matter and energy when applied to the universe over long enough cosmic timescales can explain everything that will ever emerge. This means that the formation of literally everything in our universe, from atomic nuclei to atoms, to simple molecules, to complex molecules, to life, to intelligence, to consciousness and beyond, can all be understood as something that emerges directly from the fundamental laws underpinning reality, with no additional laws and forces. Which of the following can be best inferred from the paragraph above? All right. So let's see the options now. Everything in the universe fundamentally occurs randomly. Right. So the paragraph says that everything is governed by the same very basic laws. Right. So while we might create, uh, you know, laws to, uh, for specific cases, for special cases, for practical use cases, for most commonly encountered scenarios. Right. We might create uh, some handy uh, generalizations, some thumb rules, right? But these thumb rules will uh, essentially uh, make some loose assumptions, right? Which will not always be correct. So the very when we take everything down to the fundamental laws, we realize that all the laws that we have created, right, are special cases, are uh, uh, you know, assumpt uh, like generalizations with certain assumptions are uh, 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 derivatives, practical derivatives of the same essential laws. So what the paragraph is saying is that the essential, the very fundamental, the most, uh, say, sort of the purest and uh, uh, inviolable laws of nature, right? They remain the same and everything else, like any practical guidelines, domain or discipline specific guidelines or uh, other principles that we create are specific manifestations of the same, right? So when we distill uh, all the rules and knowledge and, you know, uh, causal explanations, what we get as a distillate, as a pure uh, core that underlies all systemization of knowledge and all other so-called doctrines and principles, we find that the pure uh, laws, pure objective laws are these fundamental laws that lie at the at the heart of reality that govern how the basic building blocks of the universe uh, matter and energy right come together and give rise to everything else and as complexity increases often exponentially we create handy thumb rules and uh, specific uh, uh, tenets to uh, shorthands for uh, understanding specific parts of those complexities, but they are merely manifestations of these fundamental laws. Although they are so con, they have become so convoluted in that those manifestations that it is difficult for us to connect at a first glance. Right? This is sort of what I understood from the passage. Right? Uh, now, even if you don't understand that, right, I might find this passage more interesting because, say, um from a certain background or have certain interests, right? Even without that, you can easily solve the passage. In fact, uh, sharing some uh, background or having, you know, passages from areas of your interest can often be a double-edged sword. It can be risky because you are more prone to presumptions and more prone to going outside the passage and being biased subconsciously or consciously biased, right? So make sure uh, that you answer as objectively as possible. So even if you have no interest in uh, no particular interest in science or even if you know you are from a non-science background and you know uh, astronomy or cosmology is not among your interests or uh, favored reading areas it's completely fine uh, in fact you you would probably be less risky to make errors based on uh, assumptions and preconceived notions and uh, external biases right so let's just try to answer it objectively the first option, everything in the universe fundamentally occurs randomly. So the passage is saying that the rules that govern the very most basic units, right, are ultimately the ones that indirectly govern even the macro scale phenomena. So the fundamental laws are the same for the micro, uh, right, rather nano, the atomic scale uh, phenomena, the same fundamental forces manifest in uh, greater things, right? So the fundamental laws remain the same, whether we are talking on short term scales or large cosmic scales, right? Whether we are talking on scales of size or scales of time, what governs the small is ultimately what governs the 
mighty, the giant, the enormous, right? That is what the passage is saying. So it is saying there are laws that govern. There are laws of uh, physics. There are laws that determine how things will happen, right? So uh, there is an there is a sense of order. There is a sense of causality, right? And uh, there is a uh, uh, um, there is a uh, sense of uh, dictation where uh, how something will happen is dictated by the laws that um, are fundamental to the universe. So as soon as we start talking of laws and principles that govern something, we know that it is not going to be all random, right? Even if there is randomness, even if there is chaos, we will have you know means to maybe quantify it or understand it or some sort of thing. It will not be all random. That is the point. There could be randomness, there could be chaos, there could be uncertainty, right? But whatever it will be, there would be laws describing it and even that uncertainty or chaos would follow certain principles. It will not be all random. So everything in the universe, everything uh, fundamentally occurs randomly, not correct. That contradicts the very thing that the passage is saying that there are laws governing how the universe functions at tiny and large scales, right? So even if you have no interest in uh, cosmology or physics or if, like you're not from a STEM background, you can easily answer it by just understanding that uh, if we are talking of fundamental laws and what the passage is saying is essentially that the laws govern how things will happen. They dictate how things will happen. They tell us how things will happen or rather we understand that, okay, since this happened, then this will follow as a result, right? So there is that sense of order. It's not complete chaos as option A is implying, right? So option A is incorrect. Let's look at option B. All phenomena in the universe fundamentally occur spontaneously. Right, spontaneously means like uh, instantly of their own accord, right? Without needing any, <coughs> excuse me, without needing any uh, sort of uh, um, processing time or maturation time or uh, sort of um, uh, ignition, right? Um, without needing any external uh, uh, agent to. Uh, condition it without any external conditioning. So, for example, you might have heard of spontaneous combustion, right? Uh, so, spontaneous, like something that happens of its own accord, happens in uh, the instant, right? So, uh, nowhere is the passage saying that all phenomena happen spontaneously. It is also, in fact, saying that uh, there are things that happen over long time scales, like maybe millions of years, sort of that. So there are a phenomena that happen over long time scale. So we know that then uh, not everything occurs spontaneously and that's not what the passage is implying. So uh, again, option B is not what the passage is uh, uh, saying, right? Let's look at option C. Fundamental laws operating in the universe and in an atom are the same. This is most like uh, what is the central idea of the passage which the passage is trying to tell us, right? The fundamental laws that govern the smallest constituents of matter and energy when applied to the universe over long enough cosmic time scales can explain everything that will ever emerge, right? So, sort of uh, taking us from that uh, fundamental uh, uh, micro view, right? Where we are looking at a tiny um, building, like the tiny sample of building blocks to the bigger picture, how that bigger picture emerges out of that fundamental grainy uh, texture, right? So that is what essentially option C is saying. So a perfect analog, that small to big transition, which the passage is implying, and uh, uh, not rather a transition, but the small to big uh, uh, observation, transition of perspective or transition of observation, right? That uh, what governs the small is essentially what governs the big. What dictates the small is what uh, dictates the big. So exactly what that is saying, that there is a perfect one-to-one -one correspondence uh, in option C, right, of the main idea of the passage. So option C is correct. Let's look at option D. Uh, all phenomena in the universe are fundamentally dependent on long cosmic time scales. No, of course not. The passage is saying that uh, when these are applied over long enough time scales, they can be uh, explained. So maybe you, when you apply uh, these over short time scales, you feel that, okay, that's incomplete or that doesn't completely explain it. But when you look at the bigger picture, it all starts to make sense. What is, what you feel was missing or could not be explained. You, when you look at the bigger picture, you realize that, okay, that's 
how it manifests. Maybe in the short term, you see a different kind of pattern, but in the uh, long term, you observe certain periodicities of which become apparent, which were, you know, where only a part of it was visible in the short term time scale that might become obvious in the long term time scale. Besides that, long enough uh, cosmic time scales is just, you know, part of the explanation. It's not the main explanation. It's not saying that, okay, things like the same laws do not apply in short term time scales. It's just that they become apparent uh, uh, when you look at long-term time scales, right? The, that connection becomes apparent. It's not like it does not apply there, right? So uh, the phenomena still occur even in the short term. They occur. The same laws govern them, right? It's just that they become. Uh, you can visualize them properly. You can under. We can comprehend that con causal connection, that manifestation from the simple to the complex, from the elementary order to the uh, grand order, right? When we look at it in the cosmic. Uh, long-term cosmic time scale, right? So option D is uh, uh, not focusing on the main idea and it is just singling out the long cosmic time scale, right? It's leaving out the short uh, part and it's leaving out the structural spatial part. It's just focusing on the time scales. It's not focusing on the main idea. So for multiple reasons, option D is incorrect. Let's look at option E. Fundamental laws undergo a change from atom to the universe. In fact, this is some. This is the exact opposite of what the passage is trying to say. It is contrary to the main idea of the passage. So, as I already explained, the passage says that the fundamental laws stay the same, whether it's for the uh, tiniest atoms or for the uh, for ga massive galaxies or the universe entire. Right. So that is what the passage is saying that these fundamental laws stay the same. We just need to understand them. Right, we need to visualize it. So option E is contrary to what the passage is saying. Exactly contrary. And that's why option E is also incorrect. And the correct answer is option C. Gosh.